On July 2nd, 2020, former FERC Chairman Neil Chatterjee and Commissioner Richard, Richard Glick issued a joint statement about the DC Circuit opinion in Allegheny Defense Project versus FERC. The statement asked Congress to amend the Natural Gas Act, and I quote, consider providing FERC with a reasonable amount of additional time to act on rehearing requests, end quote. Uh, for the purpose of simplicity, I I'm going to refer to rehearing requests as appeals. The subcommittee's investigation this year re revealed that on average, FERC took 212 days or about seven months to issue a decision on landowners' appeals. So, Ms. Mr. Turpin, how much time do you believe is reasonable for, for FERC to act on appeals? Uh, well, I think the statutes, uh, and, and as clarified by the court, has stated that the commission has 30 days or those appeals are denied and, and, and folks can then seek appellate review. Um, the, the, tip, the issues typically raised uh, in rehearing are, are uh, technical and complex. Um, the commission spends a lot of time trying to uh, sort those issues out and, uh, and provide reasoned decisions. I don't know if Mr. Morinoff would have a, an additional uh, statement to add. Um, Representative, thank you for the question. While both Chairman Chatterjee and Commissioner Glick have stated that they defer to Congress on whether and to what extent to extend that period, I think the legislation introduced by, I believe, Representative Malinowski with respect to the Natural Gas Act and Representative Kasten with respect to the Federal Power Act established what would uh, strike a reasonable balance between additional time for the commission and continuing to ensure uh, prompt action on rehearing. And what is that time that they suggest? Thank you. I believe for the Natural Gas Act, it is approximately 60 to 90 days. And I believe for the Federal Power Act, it is approximately 120 days, reflecting the varied complexity uh, that is typical as to the hearings under those statutes. In the same uh, July statement, FERC stated that any legislation extending the time for appeals should ban companies from seeking eminent domain during the FERC appeal period. And I could not uh, agree more. If you're in an appeal, you shouldn't be able to go in there and grab uh, someone's property. Uh, so, uh, but FERC doesn't need an act of Congress for that. I think you should be able to do that on your own. So Mr. Morinoff, does FERC have authority to suspend certificates of public necessity? Uh Yes, representative, the commission could suspend a, uh, could could uh, issue a stay with respect to a, the order granting a certificate. So in that case, Mr. Moranoff, does FERC even need Congress to pass a law prohibiting imminent domain while an appeal is pending? Why can't FERC suspend the certificate on its own accord? Um, representative, I think it is correct. The commission could, as a matter of course, issue that type of stay. Uh, I think that is a very broad action if the commission were to take. And as I had noted earlier, the commission has traditionally viewed the eminent domain uh, provision of the statute as providing that authority to the certificate holder. Uh, for that reason, I do agree with the request from Chairman Chatterjee and Commissioner Glick that Congress taking that action would be a cleaner way to ensure that if the commission, what well, what would be the cleanest way to ensure that that action is properly taken within statutory authority. Would you agree that eminent domain could not be granted on a suspended certificate? Uh, I, I think that is correct. Um, and Com I, Commissioner Glick has, in fact, suggested that FERC should suspend certificates while an appeal is pending. And I, I, I strongly suggest that FERC adopt that practice or that Chairman Raskin legislate that pra practice. It seems totally fair to me. And I must admit, I'm a bit confused as to why FERC believes it needs Congress to act on this. FERC created the tolling order procedure out of whole cloth. Nothing in the statute provides FERC the explicit authority to issue tolling orders, which primarily benefit pipelines. But FERC did it anyway, and yet they don't seem to be willing to be as creative or supportive when it comes to measures that could benefit landowners. I find that troubling. So I urge FERC, FERC to leverage all tools at its disposal to restore the proper balance 
of power between big natural gas and big companies and provide landowners. And uh, if not, I, I hope that uh, the chair and the ranking member act legislatively to address this. And I yield back and again, I thank all the participants and the chairman and ranking member for calling this important, uh, really, balance of power uh, issue for, for our communities.